Hey everyone, it's Matt again with another video, and today we're going to show you how to make this taxi top light. So like always, before we get started, we're going to make sure we have everything we need. And what we have here is our base, our LED strip, four support pieces for the LED strip, and also to mount them into the base, the four screws for that, and our eight screws that are going to be used to mount the shell onto all this once it's all done. So let's get that started. So the first thing we need to do is drill a hole into the board uh, so we can actually run our wire powering our LED strip. And we're going to put that right about here. Uh, you will change the orientation over on the edge uh, depending on if they need three magnets, two magnets, that kind of thing. Uh, if you have four magnets, it doesn't matter because they're going to go on all four corners. So, but in this case, uh, this one doesn't have any magnets. This one's going to be screwed uh, directly to the roof. So we need to put our little hole right about there. So let's get that going. All right, so we got our hole drilled here. It's a little off center, but that's okay. Uh, it's kind of the disadvantage of doing it freehand. I have a big jig to do it, but I find it a little It's a little cumbersome to use so I just do it like this. It doesn't affect the quality at all um, Sometimes it's actually good to have it a little offset uh, Just for when we go to plug the hole with some uh, with some silicone so if, uh, what we need to do now is actually lay our LED strip across it uh, as centered as we can uh, run the wires through the hole and then get this all mounted. So we'll start with that. Now with the second one, before you mount that one, you want to make sure it's nice and straight before you plug it down. That looks good, so we'll get that going. So now that we have our LED strip mounted uh, on the rails, uh, what we're going to do now before we uh, start working on the shell is we are going to put a little extra silicone on the uh, uh, electrical components here and we're also going to plug up the hole. Um, there's still a little bit of uh, protection on there but I like to put uh, a lot more than it needs uh, just because these are outside and the cold and the heat and they need to last. So we'll do that. First thing I do always Get some of this stuff all over the components here. Get it nice and watertight. Making sure to not, I repeat, not try to rip the surface mount components off. And with this, if we get this in at the right angle, you'll fill in right underneath everything. If your gun doesn't want to yep, pop loose there. You'll get right in underneath everything, filling in everything underneath. Get a little shot more on the top. And this is a completed base and we now just have to mate it up to the shell. And that can be whichever design we have. We have medium lows and ashes in this style. Um, this one's gonna be an ash. Uh, but they're the same size uh, base-wise, so that's why this will work for both. So we'll put that on and uh, check it out, clean it up, and it should be good to go. So with our shell here, uh, ours are a little different than everyone else's. Ours are made of injection-molded polycarbonate um, with uh, UV modifiers and uh, impact modifiers and all that other kind of good stuff. Uh, but that's not the, uh, the good part. The good part is you see this little lip running across the entire uh, perimeter. And the base actually fits flush internally. And when we go to seal this up, uh, it makes a much better watertight seal than it would if you were to just sandwich a piece of plexiglass against a piece of puck board. And that's why we do them like this. And I've had lights that I've built that come in for service nine, 10 years after the fact. And uh, the only reason they're coming in is one of the LEDs finally died or burnt out. Um, 
So we do try to build them to last because uh, in the cab industry, uh, if the cab's not on the road, it's not making any money. So uh, we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, uh, nice, uh, nice clean inside. Uh, put a nice bead of silicone across the shell, sandwich it in, screw it together, clean up the outside, and this one's ready for our customer. So we'll get that cleaned and going. Now when I'm degreasing and cleaning these, I use a microfiber cloth, and I'll either use some uh, 90 plus percent isopropyl alcohol, or I will just crack out a can of non-chlorinated uh, brake cleaner. Now, it's a great degreasing agent, um, and it works remarkably well. Uh, doesn't degrade the plastic uh, just because of all the modifiers and just what polycarbonate is. Uh, and we will start that. Now you don't need much. You just need to get the uh, get the cloth a little moist on the one section. You just want to get out all the little dust that can be in here from a shell sitting on the shelf. And because this is going to be sealed up, you don't want anything inside here that could uh, get lit up and you can see it and it's closed. You don't want that. So I don't clean the outside yet. I wait until I got the inside all mounted and screwed together in that way. If I'm cleaning this, I'm not somehow getting it into here. So I make sure I have the one clean surface. And that way I know I won't contaminate anything. Or at least as little as I can. Got a nice bead of outdoor grade silicone. Nice, thick, heavy bead. What we do is we don't put it to the edge, but we do put it behind the screws. Uh, we make sure to get into the uh, injection uh, mold uh, ejection port markings, um, just because those have a little bit of a different shape to them and you don't want water getting in through that little crack, so we fill it in as much as we can. So yeah, a nice thick bead of silicone all around, as close to the perimeter as we can. Because uh, what we do, in the past what we used to do is we used to squiggle this all over the thing and then once you finally push it down, it got super messy and it would just squirt out everywhere. But with this, we find when you press everything down, it squishes down a little bit inside and a little bit out that way, but not entirely to the point where it's gonna squirt out the edge, but it fills everything in nice. So, take our thing, or our base rather, upside down, and just kind of grab the thing here, set it down gently, like so, Give it a nice firm press. Uh, I don't know if you could hear that on camera, but there's a lot of air hissing out and that's good. What a nice solid connection here. Okay. Now, a little bit of painter's tape. Take the wire, just tape it down. And then, that's ready for uh, to be screwed down. So what I do is I lean it on the side like this, take my drill, get my very long Roberts bit, take our screws, and the first one I always do is the center on the on the edge. You don't want to screw it too tight because it is a you know, a screw, and at the end of the day, this is all plastic, so if you just pull the trigger on your drill and just keep going, it will just burn through it and strip itself, and it'll be no good. So you want to make sure you screw them in slowly enough and firm enough that it does cut into the material, but not so much that 
it burns through it. So we'll get that going for the other two here, one on the ends and the three on the other side. And then this is ready to have the corners drilled out um, so that they can be uh, mounted to the roof. Now, alternatively, if it wasn't being uh, screwed down, um, the underside here would have magnets. So sometimes they have one here, one here. Sometimes they'll have here, here, and a central one over here. And then the four on each corner. Now, if the four are in each corner, the corners get drilled uh, anyway, just because the bolts and everything go through there and they get mounted on the ends. But if you just have two or three kind of thing, what we'll do is we'll put screws in all the corners uh, because it doesn't need uh, any kind of hole to mount it on because it's using the magnets. So, finish drilling this together, bore out the uh, corners, uh, wipe it all up, get it all clean, and it's good for our customer. Now, as you can see, that's all put together nicely. And like I said, I've been handling this and got a couple little dots of silicone there, but nothing just egregiously pouring out the sides. So I know I did a nice good job. There's not too much in there. And now it's time to drill the corners out. Uh, something I just remembered, uh, a buddy of mine years ago was watching me do this. And he asked me why I wasn't using the uh, uh, torque uh, uh, settings on the drill. So I can just pull the trigger and once it clicks, it's done. Um, have that not work a couple times on something like this and you having to strip the thing out and redo the entire base uh, a couple times and then you'll, you'll know exactly why I don't do that. So we'll get this going. All right, so this roof load is fully assembled. We're just going to clean up the outside, uh, get it all nice and clean. Now again, with the uh, brake cleaner, and then this is out the door. All right, so that is all good. Um, one other thing I should probably uh, show you guys. The roof lights on the bottom are not flat. They have a little gentle curve to them, and there's a very good reason. Uh, roofs are not flat. Roofs have a little bit of a bend to them. Now, not to say this is gonna have a perfect fit on every single car it goes on, but having some kind of curve is better than none, uh, and that helps it sit nice and flush, or as flush as you can. But uh, yeah, that's how you make your top light. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Uh, as always, like and subscribe. And until the next video, have a good one.